Hi everyone, uh, my name is Emily. I'm a knitter, I'm also a test knitter. You can find me on Instagram, Ravelry, uh, you know, all the social media platforms as Emily Cut. Uh, and uh, I'm here today to present to you some of the test knits that I've done in the, in the past. On my podcast, I usually talk about the latest one that just came out. Uh, and today, this is the Summerwood Tea by uh, Liv um, from Woodland Knits on Instagram. So Liv designed this wonderful tea here, and I'm going to talk about this one. But first, before I get to talking about this, what I'm wearing now um, is my resource raglan by Sarah Opi, or uh, you can find her S Knits on Instagram. So the resource raglan available on Ravelry as well. So this is my previous test knit. If you're interested to know more about this one, just uh, go back one episode. Uh, it's an entire episode dedicated to how I made this sweater. So feel free to go have a look. And today, this is the one I focus on. But before I talk about this tea here, I just wanted to give a few words as to why I love test knitting, um, because it sort of sets the tone for, uh, for this one here. I love test knits because they have an end date to them. Um, I love having that end date because it makes me finish my projects. What I love about knitting is all of the creative um, space or the creative uh, process behind it. What I really love is seeing a pattern and going, oh, I love that pattern. I have the yarn for it and imagining what it would look like in a different texture, in a different fiber, in a different uh, color, um, what I'm presented. So I see, I see what the designer, the new pattern looks like. And I love that part about creating my own version of that pattern. So when I start knitting, <laughs> then if I see that vision come to life, it's like I don't need to finish the project. I'm just satisfied with seeing how it's turning out and how beautiful that is. But I don't feel that I don't enjoy the process of needing as much as I love the creation of or the vision of my project. So when I see that come to life, even if I haven't finished my project, I see it come to life. And for me, it's fulfilling. And I don't necessarily get that project to the end, which is the issue <laughs> unless I do a test knit. So I've mentioned before, I think it was the first episode, uh, other reasons why it's, it's such a good fit for me, but that is also another reason why um, I prefer the creation process than I do the knitting process. Um, so I don't always finish my projects. And I wanted to say this because this is the first time in this sweater, I do apologize to you, Liv, but it's the first time I didn't complete my test in time. You know, at personal reasons, some things happen, right? And this is one of those moments where I didn't complete in time the sweater. But um, I believe it's respectful then to say, well, I haven't held up my end of the bargain where I was supposed to provide the comments, finished photos uh, in exchange for the pattern and testing the pattern. Um, so before uh, the, the, the when, when it was released, before she... Uh, gave me the pattern on my Ravelry. Uh, I went ahead and I bought the pattern off of the of Liv because I believe it's a gorgeous pattern and she deserves every uh, bit of money to to um, sorry translation issue here, but she deserves um, what I pay for um, because it's a wonderful pattern and I wasn't able to finish you know in time. So I believe it's just the right thing to do then to buy the pattern. So first time this happens to me, unable to finish on time. Um, but you know, a little bit of self-love and a little bit of being conscious that um, some things are out of your control. And uh, as much as I'm a perfectionist and I would have loved to finish on time, sometimes it's just not a reality. And that was one of them. But I was still able to finish a few days after the release and I'm introducing it to you now. Um, it's a gorgeous tea. For this one, I opted to use BC Garn Soft Silk. Um, so this is the soft silk. It's a burette silk. Now burette silk, what is uh, fun about the burette silk is it's got all sorts of clump in there. So it's a very uneven yarn and I love knitting burette silk. 
for that reason. I was not sure how it was going to turn out with the motif or a little design in it. Is it going to, is the motif going to come out good if all of my uh, stitches are uneven, but it does come out really well. So I'm very happy with this project and I really like barrette silk. Now barrette, um, unlike what she uses for uh, the pattern, the main, um, the main yarn she uses is Saona, which is a cotton and wool blend together 50 50 i believe uh, but that cotton which over time sort of gets lazy and grows a little bit um, is held together with that 50 that other 50 percent which is uh, wool which holds its shape a hell well a lot better than the than this than the cotton does so your sweater then keep, keeps its shape in place um, with barrette silk, you do not get this. So it's a ve ve vegetal fiber. Um, sorry, it's not that. It's a. Uh, it it will grow with time. Barrette silk grows with time. I see it on my ranunculus that I show you here. Okay, so with time, we can see the bottom here stretches a little bit more, and uh, it doesn't keep the shape as good as a wool blend or a fully wool sweater. And that's just normal, it's the, that's the fiber that does this. But to counteract that fiber effect, if you want the structure in your yarn, I've shown it before, but I'm gonna show it again. I use a little thread to keep my neckline nice and tight so that it doesn't grow over time, which is you know, the main complaint of knitters when they knit cotton or they knit uh, a silk that it will grow over time, doesn't keep its shape good. Well, here's a trick uh, that you can put into your sweater. It's easy to thread in at the end of your sweater. So I still have to do it with the summer wood tee here, but I've done it with this ranunculus and I'm gonna show you from up close how easy that is. A needle and you thread in the back or the wrong side of your sweater, that thread of here, which when you pull together really holds the shape. I've doubled it. Uh, doubled it up and it really holds that shape and on the other side it's invisible you don't see it this is a really neat trick in order to keep the shape of your sweaters um if that's something that you want so i have yet to do it with this one but i definitely will the one i used um personally is uh i saw the trick from petit knit sweater um, one of our sweater recommended doing it because it was, uh, again, the cotton blend. Um, and I've been doing that since. And I've bought mine on the website of Petit Knit, but I'm sure you can get it anywhere near you. Uh, that type of little thread. So it's an elastic thread, single. You can see it really stretches. If you do double it up like I do for my necklines, then it's a bit less stretchy and a bit more solid. So this is how I like to do it. So I double it up and then thread it in the neckline. Um, yeah, that's it. That's, that's a simple trick, it really is simple. And it keeps my knit really nice uh, and keeps the structure of them over time, which is great, because you've spent so much time knitting it, you want it to keep its shape, you want it to stay really, really nice over time. So there we go. I've used the barrette silk, as I said, um, and to counteract that netic, often I get that negative comment from silk or cotton. It's going to lose its shape. And I'm like, no, 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 there's tricks and there's ways to keep the shape together. Um, so I wanted to share that with you guys. This sweater, what's special about it? Well, special. It's not the trend much to start from the bottom and then go up. So this is something um, different. If you want to switch it up, this is a bottom up sweater. You start from the bottom, go up. Um, what I did to for sh to know that I had the right length in the body uh, is measure my ranunculus because I knew it was going to be it's a similar shaped sweater from the, the ranunculus where you have a part raglan into the yoke uh, for the ranunculus and the, although it's not full raglan but you do have a part raglan in there and I knew it was going to have sort of the same ease um, so I wanted the same uh, fit on me. And so what I did is measured the body length from underarm to uh, the, the very bottom of my ranunculus and copied that into this sweater. So I knew I had the right fit and the right length that I was looking for. And that worked out really great for me. Um, 
So if you need ever, if you start bottom up, but you're nervous that you're not going to hit that right length in the, in the body, uh, look up a similar sweater you've knitted into a different, like a similar sweater, a similar structure. If you've got a raglan for this one, it'd be great to compare to a raglan. If you want a similar fit, then go and look up, measure that sweater, and then reproduce the same thing here. And then it's going to match um, what you want. So that's a really neat trick as well. Um, after the, so, oh, I forgot to mention, it's got three options for the color work. So when you start bottom up, uh, right from the start, you get to make that decision. Where do you want the little design? Um, here, that the motif. Uh, do you want it to, so there's three options that she, she gives you to pick from. You can have it only in the front where the raglan seams go. So you can have that option a little wider. It wraps around the body a little bit. So that's option number two. And I picked option number three, which is an all around motif. And why did I pick this, uh, this uh, option three? The all around is because it's summer and it's got holes in it. And if you say holes, well, I like to wear a little uh, tank top underneath um, so that you don't see everything through the holes, basically. So I wear a little tank top underneath. And if I'm, gonna, if I'm, sorry, if I'm gonna wear a tank top and then on top of that, wear that sweater and it's the summer, well, it's gonna get hot. So having holes all around the sweater is actually really nice and breezy. I've worn it uh, already. So uh, I know for a fact that it's nice and breezy as the wind goes through all the holes and the you know front back so really nice sweater for this summer i've worn it <laughs> i think uh too much for the five days that i've i've had it now <laughs> i think i wore it two maybe three days not full days but uh parts of my days i go out and put this on so yeah maybe i've exaggerated but i really like it that's just how much i love it um so i've been wearing it quite a bit um lately and um yeah i really love the fit of it i'm noticing that raglan sweaters are really great on me they look great they fit great and i'm very happy with them um so i might just go on picking um raglan sweaters to test it because it, the fit's really great on on my body type and i encourage you to find yours um there's many different you know bossy uh, sleeve different uh ways of construction if you find one that suits you go ahead i mean it's it's a gift to know what suits you better and then be able to then knit that for yourself i mean it's it's uh it's the best so i'm really happy i found the raglan is a really great fit for me um so far this one here that i'm presenting i just want to note that it is not blocked yet i will block it in the next uh, few days for it well after I've worn it quite a bit because it's silk, so I know it's gonna grow a little bit. So I wanna wear it while it's got this shape a little longer. Also, um, wait until I, I block for it to be the first wash, really. So I'm gonna wear it, you know, little parts of the day as I go out on an ex an outing, come back, then I switch my sweater for something else. This is how I like to, to wear my sweater. It's just for the outings either here and there, and then I switch back into something for the home um and so i extend the life before washing of, uh, of of my sweater especially if it's not a wool like wool and pure wool you don't need to wash as often you can wear and wear and wear and and it doesn't really get dirty or uh, it doesn't smell it's uh it's great for that and that's why we love knitting but when it comes to other fibers well they need washed a bit more often um so i tend to wear them only for the outings and then take them off when I get home and get into something else for a, a full wool uh, sweater. So yeah, uh, it's going to wait. It's not blocked. It's not the best stitch definition. It's, it's, like it's going to get a better stitch definition once I'll block it or wash it for the first time, but I'm still very happy with how it looks right now. And I want to wear it like that for now. And uh, I think I've, I took notes here of what I wanted to say, and I think I've gone around the whole thing oh no okay one more thing i did not finish on time and i bought the the pattern um and seeing as i was and i think it was like four days late into finishing after release so uh, because i bought the pattern by then i opted for a modification on my sweater i never get that chance because i'm always testing and when you test you need to reproduce exactly the pattern 
um, you know, as per pattern. So I never get a chance to sort of adjust to my need and any big structural changes I won't do because I'm testing. So it's very important to keep the pattern as is. Um, but this time I made a small modifications and I didn't feel bad about making that modification because I bought the patterns at that point. Um, and it's very tiny. So if you wish to have like me a bit more open neckline, what I did is omit four rows before the short, short rows. So, um, you know, after you join the sleeves, you do all of the decrease in the yoke. Um, the last four rows I omitted, I didn't knit them. And that's the only change. You can keep going with the pattern as is, and uh, you will get the same result as me. Um, so omitted four rows and that is it. It's just made that neckline a little bit wider is all it did because I was omitting, I think, two decreases. And I did that because it's summer. And for the same reasons as the holes throughout the body is to have it a, bree a breezy t-shirt and uh, a bit more open in the neckline, which I, it breathes a little bit more uh, because it's really hot here in the province of Quebec in the summer. So if I want to wear it and I do want to wear it and that's why I've been wearing it, it needs to be breezy. So it needs to breathe. Um, and I wanted just a slightly, slightly, very little change here, slightly bigger uh, neckline. And that's what I've done. Um, but other than that, absolutely no changes to the pattern whatsoever. It is as is uh, because it was gorgeous. It's um, a really, I recommend it. It's easy. It's a very easy pattern and um, it knits up quickly and very, it, like very much. I ended up finishing late, but it's not because it was a slow knit. It's uh, other reasons that, that influenced it, but very quick knit and I really enjoyed the process of it. Meditative with all of the color work, um, or color work, the, uh, the, the, the lace knitting throughout that little pattern here. And if that scares you, um, you're afraid, you know, there's the three options that you have. So instead of doing all around, you can do just the front raglan part with the motif. And then when you get to the end of that, the, the rest of it, you knit and stock in it. So if that, that's a really valid option, if you're afraid of doing a full lace uh, t-shirt, you have that option. It's in the pattern um, and you can easily follow that pattern and get the same results but with only the front with the holes or the little pattern in there. So um, there's options. If you uh, feel like having a sweater just like this one, go ahead. It's really great. Now I'm going to go and put it on and uh, show you what it's like on me and the fit. Another thing I'm going to show you, because this pattern requires a bit of counting on the rows and you count on any pattern really. Uh, but this one you count uh, just to make sure you're you know, when's my last row I want to make and in the decreases, or you're always counting at some point, some stitches. Um, and I have a really neat trick I learned from my friends back in St. Eustache, uh, I used to, where I used to live and where I learned to knit with my friends. They showed me how to count stitches in a very efficient manner. So I'm going to give this as a gift to you too, because it does improve the speed of counting by a large margin. Um, so counting stitches, never fun, but with this method, you'll breeze through and fly through the counting. Um, so I'll be right back with this one and to show you how I count. Here it is. I hope you can see it well. I'm sorry, I can't see myself in the, the camera. I hope you see it well. Uh, first thing I'm going to show is how that barrette silk sort of likes to hang out. You can already see that it wants to expand on the neckline, so this is why it's going to be important. I thread that little elastic around the neckline soon. Yeah, you can see it here, right? So I'm going to do that. And uh, yeah, I love the fit. Now onto showing you how I like to count with the project I have on my needles, which is a bit of the, you know, when I was saying it's not a test knit, so I don't complete it. This is one that's been on my needles for a really long time. Uh, and I love it. So it's nothing to do with not loving it because it really is a project I love, but it's just 
not finished. So I'm going to show you how I count with that project right now. Right, so I put my mic here in one of the holes in order to show you how I count. And get ready because this goes quick. It goes really, really quick. Here's the victim. I'm going to come to the back of the camera here so I can see. I'm not very comfortable. I'm super extending my arms here, but it doesn't matter. You'll see it's uh, going to be very efficient to show you anyway. So thumb is worth three. Finger or index is worth two. Three, two, three, two, and three plus two gives five. And that is the trick. So push three with my thumb, two with my finger. That's five. Three, two is 10. Three, two is 15. Three, two is 20, and so on. And so how it goes really quick. Five, 10, 15. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 5, 50, 5, 60, 5, 70. So I counted 70 stitches there in no time. And this is my great counting method and my <laughs> really good gift to you, I think, because you're not going to need to go like, ah, 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 don't talk to me, I'm counting, because you'll be done counting before they start talking. It goes that quick. And so there you go. Maybe one last time to show you just how efficient this is. Three with the thumb, two with the index, three with the thumb, two with the index. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. That's how quick it goes. I hope this will help as it helped me when I was taught that trick. It's been an incredible trick to me. So helpful. I hope it helps you too. Thank you so much for being with me today. Um, see you soon. Bye.